Hello, Commanders. How are you doing today? Hopefully you all are doing very well. Welcome to another day in Star Trek Fleet Command. In today's video, I want to talk about our new Epic Officer, James Kirk. <clears throat> and I want to kind of go over his, his, his abilities and the biggest problem with Kirk. So let's talk about that. Let's jump into it. Let's find some answers together. Okay, so as we hop into it, just a quick reminder, a couple of things real quick that uh, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. It really helps to keep the channel growing and uh, welcome in new faces, new people that, that I can help. Also hit that thumbs up and, uh, and like the video. really, really does help. So, um, And lastly, please remember, I'm just getting the word out here that we are, or I've started streaming on Twitch. Uh, just barely made affiliates, so I think we can start doing some fun things on there. And since we made affiliate this month, I am planning on doing a Flash Pass giveaway at the end of the month. Uh, you have to be present for that. Um, and uh, anyways, it should be fun. So we will we'll do that uh, do that later. So feel free to join for that as well. Uh, follow me on Twitch so you're sure you're aware of when I go live. Okay, let's look at James Kirk. Time to do a quick video today just to get this information out to you all and get my initial thoughts since I have yet to unlock him. And if you haven't followed me on Twitch, you can see <laughs> I went kind of nuts. I just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna, I need a lot of research. And so I blew all my, almost all my latinum I had. I opened up the treasury this last month, uh, or the, sorry, this month. And uh, yeah, I had like uh, seven, eight million. <laughs> Crazy, I should have tracked, should be interesting, I should have tracked because at this level I'm paying a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Latinum, just on, not just on speed ups, but also on common materials, which is a big pain in the butt to get past. Um, I imagine the next pain in the butt will be when it, when it switches from common to rare, or it's uncommon and rare rather than common and uncommon, so either way you need patience and, uh, patience or money in this game, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, that's where we're at there, uh, but I did unlock some shards. I am still, what, 49 uh, shards away, so we'll see if I'm able to source him and do some testing. So uh, I want to talk about his captain's ability as the primary thing about uh, his, his value, I think, this month. So let's talk about the officer ability real quick. Uh, James Kirk increases base weapon damage by 200% versus non-armada hostiles. I'm mostly interested in this as they've released it during uh, an arc where we are contending with the Gorn. I'm interested to see how this increase in base weapon damage will affect um, Hitting the Gorn Hostiles, how it's going to affect your isolytic damage output. That should be pretty interesting to see that when we're able to do some testing. Uh, since isolytic is key when hunting the Gorn. All right, let's talk about the Captain's Maneuver. Strange New Worlds, James Kirk reduces enemy shield mitigation by 40% versus non-armada Hostiles. Now, my understanding and, and belief here is that this, uh, not only will you build to max this out enough that you'll be able to, uh, you know, with synergy with other Strange New World officers. And we'll have to play with pairings and see kind of the best thing um, as far as this goes. But when we talk about shield mitigation, we're talking about here um, basically getting it so that your shots go straight to hull. And if anyone remembers when we first started hitting the Zindi and how hard and difficult they were for most people because they just ignored your shields. So you should be able to hit pretty hard, I suspect, by skipping the opponent's shields. Want to compare him? Let's find our good friend, Mr. Harrison. Da, 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 da. Harrison, Harrison, Harrison. Uh, I must have passed him. There we go. So, John Harrison, uh, aka Khan before he becomes Khan, <laughs> um, he's going to increase weapon damage, obviously, as a captain's maneuver, but the comparison here is this sabotage. 
For the first round of combat, John Harrison ignores 70% of the opponent's shields. So in a way, our new James Kirk is kind of like um, John Harrison on steroids. <laughs> As the captain's ability, of course. Uh, but with Synergy, once again, you're going to be able to do some massive damage. So we'll have to kind of see and play with where this is going to be most helpful. <clears throat> I think you're going to see, um, I know one crew that we've been trying to kind of play with and, and use with uh, the NX-01 is when you're hitting the aquatic hostels. And this is the first thing that came to my mind. Feel free to chime in down below if you have other thoughts where he might be useful. Um, but I've thought, you know, with the NX-01, you eventually get to a point, I think around tier six slash seven, depending upon your ops level, um, your research and, and so forth where the ship is strong enough that you can farm the rare chips by using Pike, E-Data, and uh, John Harrison. Uh, and the idea was to do as much damage as possible so that you take out those hostiles before their 30% chance go-home cannon even has a chance to fire. And so it'll be interesting to do some testing to see if we can completely ignore the shields and go straight to hull, how, you know, what kind of effect would that have on the NX-01 or other loops within the game? So it'd be interesting to kind of do some testing once we can unlock him and, um, and do some testing. So we'll have to see how that goes. Okay, so now let's talk about the problem. And this here is a recurring problem that we have with Scopely. And that is that, this game has come to a point now with the spend events, with how they've structured them, at least in my experience as Ops 56, I'd be, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts if you're in the 30s or in the 40s, you know, kind of what your experience is on unlocking officers nowadays. Um, but my experience is that it's basically become not just this, it's basically a spend event, which they have always called it a spend event, but now it's shifted from a savers and spend event to truly a spend real money spend event. Uh, the milestones are just ludicrous. They're insane. Um, and they're not getting any better. So as a reminder, and I talked about this in another video, there we go, I'll get it to load. Um, just comparing, we have a couple of different ones here. If we look at Archer, let me zoom in a little bit, maybe make that look a little bit bigger. So when we look at Archer, and we're looking at the, the, the milestones, the top milestone was 10 million for, and I'm just keeping it standard for my ops level. I assume that it's probably similar for the rest of you all. Uh, but 10 million points for Archer. We When we look at Phlox, 13.7, almost 14 million points. Bengna, um, 19.9, almost 20 million. 21.4 million for James T. Kirk. Or not James T. Kirk, sorry, James Kirk. Um, it's like the inflation isn't just in the economy, but it's in the game too. Um, Scopely looks like they're slowly trying to ratchet this up. Um, without good ways for the free-to-play or even the mostly free to play to compete very well in these events. Uh, what makes it worse at my level for those in the 50s is that we have had times where the SLB, the solo leaderboard bracket, is between 50 and 70. And I don't know about you, but I don't see that I'm competing very well or at all with those in the 60 to 70 range. It's just not, it's just not a thing. Okay, and so that, in my opinion, is a big problem. And what I think is probably, and maybe I'm wrong in this, you can give me your thoughts, but my thought is I think we've kind of gotten to this point where unless you're well or a big spender um, who are going to spend and are going to unlock the officer anyways, um, the sourcing for the regular players is very low and you kind of have to just now do you just have to assume that the only people are going to get any officers in the game are going to be the um the elites 
the, the big spenders and I don't want to shame the spenders. You know, you have the resources and you decide to spend thousands of dollars in this game if you want to. It keeps the game afloat, you know, good on you. Um, I don't mean to shame anyone for making their decisions on how they're going to spend. Having said that, my goal with my comments is merely this. I just want the everyday player to still have a chance for some decent sourcing, even if it's going to take them three months, six months. Uh, the problem I've seen is if you don't unlock half or most, at least most of the shards during a given arc, unlocking most officers in the game, we've seen a history where it is very difficult, and also, if almost, if not impossible, to source those officers. And so players are just trying to make do with what they have and you know, it's immediate dissatisfaction. So my thought here is, you know, send a message to Scopely, tell him, you know what, this really isn't fair. The wells are going to get the wealth and the spenders are the only ones getting the shards now. Can we please make sure that going forward, we have good sourcing. Now, the Gorn Eviscerator does give good sourcing for the Strange New Worlds officers, um, for, for those who have unlocked it and paid for it. Um, at least they have a free-to-play path that, that is planned going forward, so hopefully we can all, uh, those who haven't bought it, can unlock that. And part of the, um, the loop with the Eviscerator is to be able to unlock officers, which I think is great. Um, so hopefully that pans out in such a way that people are able to get the Eviscerator and get at least these officers unlocked. Um, who knows how long it's going to take to max them, but at least there's a path. So. I will, I will give kudos to Scopely for that, but uh, these spend events can be deflating where you don't even want to participate. And the only reason I could was because I unlocked the treasury uh, this month. So i um, love to hear from you all. What do you think? How far were you able to get Kirk unlocked? Was he worth pursuing for you? Um, sometimes I try to pursue officers for no other reason than I like to do testing. I love, that's one of my favorite things of the game, uh, is really ships and officers, um, and seeing how well that, uh, how, how well they do and sharing that information with you all. Um, it, it seems to be getting harder to do that, so I will keep trying to do my very best to do that. So, anyways, drop your comments below. Join me on Discord, put the link below as well for that, and join us on Twitch. I think we can, uh, we're can. we starting to get enough people that it's really starting to become really, really fun with more and more people joining the, the live stream. And, and, and bottom line, I just encourage you to keep learning, keep growing, keep keep collaborating and, and working together, and, and have fun, whatever that means. Don't let Scopely dictate to you how you're gonna spend your money or your time. Do what's fun for you. And if that means skipping some loops and not doing them because you're just so overwhelmed with all the different things you have to do every day, then do that. You know, Do what's fun, do what you enjoy, and let, let Scopely try and dictate the rules to someone else. Anyways, thank you so much. We'll talk to you next time. Have a good day.